Britain's Railway. The the oldest and one of the busiest Thank in the world. You. Okay. Thank Just you. slow down. Slow down. Surely this is illegal to be packed in like this. A huge network under constant pressure. Absolute mental today. No driver. No driver. Come on, guys. Look for the driver in guard. Where anything and everything starts happening, son, can mean delay and chaos for thousands. Backs against the wall. He's got a suicidal female on board. Train now 90 late. I went to hitting a pheasant. I've heard everything now. Filmed over a year across the nation. Wait, that one fella, that one. There's a seat next to Banana. We go behind the scenes of an industry we all love to complain about. Do you want a hand? So all in all, that's 323.50. Oi! With the railway people determined to keep Britain moving. Scotland, one of Britain's most challenging networks. Beautiful, eh? More than 200,000 passengers travel on over 2,000 trains every day. If you can stay better touch, please! With ScotRail running services within the country and long-distance operators Virgin and East Coast trains connecting England to Scotland's major cities. What I've been told today is utter, utter rubbish. Unlike the rest of the UK, political decisions about the rail network here are made by the Scottish, not British government. You're up against it all the time, weather, time. This is a network of extremes. Oh! And now, with winter months approaching, the railwomen and women of Scotland are entering their toughest season. It's an ominous cloud. It, I Trudy is one of only two female drivers on East Coast trains Scottish routes, linking London with Aberdeen. Start slowing down. You try and do everything as gracefully as possible. Anybody can just sort of thrash it up and down the country, but I like to think that I've given everybody a smooth, comfortable ride. If an ex-boyfriend gets on it, go on! There's trolleys that can be knocked over, the chef will hate you forever. So what you smoke salmon for you, sir? Yeah, enjoy your breakfast, thank you very much. I'm used to be a window dresser, so I was watching everything go past me, and I was thinking, mm. And then I saw the advert in the paper, and it said, Intercity, come and drive our high-speed trains, and it was BR days, and I, was, and I said, I said to our lad, I'd love to drive a train. I've driven lots of other things. I'd love to drive a train. And then I just turned the page. And he goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I don't, we don't let lasses drive trains today. And he said, come on, let's have a look. And in the smallest writing at the bottom, I actually thought it was a squashed fly. It said, equal opportunities women may apply. So I went for it. And I got it, and I was absolutely thrilled. Just to leave it without yeah? No matter how you drive, if you get off the front and you're a woman, or when I was pregnant, they were like, oh! I have had people not get on who've seen me at the front. It's unbelievable, you know, and their wives have come up to me later and gone, I just left him. I just left him there and he had to get the next one. What does this button do? <laughs> Eject fuel. <laughs> Thankfully there isn't that button here. Coming into Edinburgh. Yay! Alive! <laughs> How are you doing? Edinburgh Waverley Station. Ronnie Park has been helping passengers here for the past 30 years. Next one down, first coach. It's Friday afternoon, and Ronnie's busiest time of the week, when both commuters and tourists flood the station. Most of them can't speak English, but you just you can help them sign language, anything, or take them across to the platform, tell them what they need. Universal language, you know, the bar's round that way, you know, that's it. 
most people are they're going on holiday or visiting their relatives. It's up to me to get them in the, on the right place on the train and smile. See what you've got here. Yeah, first class. Yeah, just here. Yes, first class. Yeah. Right, that's fine. That's your fine. You want something? No, no, that's fine. But, you want your bag? One of my three suitcases. Hey, fine. Hey, no problem. I think when they come into the station, they've been hit by the men in black zapper, and they've no memory at all. Some of them. They're, they're, honestly, where's my train? Yeah, you know, oh, where are you going? And then you've got the ones that come running along, just miss their train, and they've got the Burger King bag. That bag, that burger just cost you a hundred pound to get to London, pal. You know, and come on, be there on time. Train doors are locked, sir. Over on the other side of the country, on the beautiful West Highland route, it couldn't be more different. This single track railway weaves past Ben Nevis and into the mountain ranges beyond, before coming to an end at the sea. Many of its remote stations are request stops with trains only stopping if a passenger flags them down. Beautiful, eh? This is a lovely part of the world, eh? I've never ever liked being working inside, you know? Talking about a turn for 13, 15, 1, 3, 1, 5, over. With just three services a day, engineer Ian McKinnon has plenty of time between trains to carry out his weekly inspection of the track. Right. And we're off. <coughs> Throw this away. Right, what we've got here is a dead hind. And what we usually do, if we've got time, we drag it off. It'll probably stink, but anyway. Oh, it's stuck to the thing there. See? Oh, it's all stuck. So I'll just throw it off, clear of the line. And probably come back maybe later on when we've got time and uh, bury it. And that's basically respect. In the meantime, it's clear of the track there. It is horrible, it's stinking. It's probably been there for a week, because we walk this once a week. And uh, it's probably been there all week. It's quite a horrible job, but you've got to do it. You ever tried venison? Very strong. Compared to ordinary meat, it's very strong, eh? But lovely. That's uh, what they call a botty. It's just basically a wee shed for you to shelter from the storms. This is probably one of the oldest ones we've got around here. Luxury, eh? <laughs> Keeps you dry and sit here and have the tea. I look forward to seeing one of them when you're walking for about eight mile. <laughs> yeah. Much of the 2,700 miles of track across Scotland cuts through the Highlands, a beautiful but punishing landscape to run trains on. Over on the Inverness route, the steep gradients and often icy temperatures make braking dangerously unpredictable. Right, get right. That's just got permission to start, gentlemen. It's all systems go. <laughs> As in the rest of the UK, Network Rail is responsible for the upkeep of the tracks. This local engineering team work the night shift on a Kubota, a specially converted farm vehicle that spreads a gloopy solution onto the rails to improve adhesion. It's just pretty much liquid sand. Click the on switch, starts running, and then it gets pumped out into these pipes, out the pipes, onto the track. And it gets pretty cold. <laughs> Minus four, but that's standing still. <laughs> so we're then jumping in that, driving at 20 mile an hour. We'll see, further we go up, it gets a colder again, like, and you boys will see that for yourselves. 
Can Hansa get a watch? Every night during winter months, Michael and Alec drive the Kubota through the highest part of the route to Inverness. Ah, it's cold up here. It takes them two hours to cover just 20 miles of track. Still trying to climb at the moment, that's how we're going so slow. Top of the rails is just covered in ice. The wheels are just spinning. It's quite hard to get traction. I suppose this is why we're here. <laughs> So the trees don't have the same problem. Yeah. I've got a wife. I've got two young kids as well. So it's a lot of unsociable hours if you like. At the end of the day, this sort of thing keeps me in the job, so I'm happy enough to do it. That could be a really tough eye. It becomes a way of life. I've been doing night shots since 1995. I'm allergic to daylight. <laughs> That's us at the top of the hill there. Huh? There, there's your sign there, from off the pass. The highest point on rail network. There you go. There's a wee, there's there's a wee sign for you. The thing of worst place is to be. You can think of better as well, there. <laughs> as easy as that. The railways keep running. Glasgow's suburban rail network is the UK's largest outside London. And Glasgow Central is Scotland's busiest station. Have you got seat reservations? No, there was no reservations. No. As well as being Scott Rail's hub for the commuter belt between Glasgow and Edinburgh, this is the starting point for Virgin trains travelling from Scotland into England on the West Coast Main Line. Um, it's past. Peak time return ticket from here to London can cost more than £300. Sir, are you, are you aware of the problems? You're not going to be there for six. Today there are severe delays for anyone catching a train south. Freight train went through the overhead wires. Between here and Carlisle, faulty overhead lines have come down and no services can run while they're being fixed. You okay, ladies? We need to get to Carlisle. Oh, it's right. as as we can. It is a passenger announcement. Due to severe yes. disruption on the West Coast Main Line, replacement bus services are operating from Gordon Street to Carlisle. We apologise for any inconvenience this may cause. Anyone for Carlisle? Carlisle! Replacement coach services have been laid on by Virgin to get passengers to Carlisle. It means adding an extra hour to journey time. How long will it take to Carlisle? About two hours, yeah. I'm going to miss the train. I'm going to miss the one at Preston as well. I'm not going to get home till 10 p.m. Just put some water for the customers in case they're thirsty, because obviously there'll be no onboard shop. So it's the least we can do, really. A lot of them want a whiskey, they don't want water. <laughs> I've had a request for that a few times this morning. Marie Claire usually works in the ticket office. Today, she's been drafted in to help with the delayed passengers. There's a bottle of water for you, OK? The overhead lines are all down. A freight train has brought down the overhead lines, causing chaos, unfortunately. Sorry, I'll just get by. You'll get your connection time when you arrive into Carlisle and they'll let you know, so OK. There we go, let's bottle of water. This is the bus for Calais, that's the queue for it there. You're kidding me on. Oh no, we're not going to get on it. We've done this journey since my grandchildren were born and at the end of the day, what I've been told today is utter, utter rubbish. We have got more buses en route yeah. as well. En route is no good to me. I don't want to be getting into Wales on the find I'm stuck till four o'clock in the morning to the next train. Just get a step lower oh, for you. I used to work in the police as a 999 operator, so it's nice to speak to people face to face. Then other times it's not nice, but you can't hang up on them. <laughs> not that you hang up anyway. You've guaranteed that I'm yeah. going to be getting home and not get stranded? Yeah, I have so, guaranteed that. So what do I do when yeah, I get yeah, stranded then? If the worst comes to the worst, we'll be getting you a taxi. Thank you. Pleased okay. to hear it. Thank you. No problem. Don't take it personally, otherwise 
you get upset an awful lot of times. You don't have time to take yourself off to a quiet corner and scream, you just get on with it. <laughs> Just to let you know that the 1440 replacement bus does not have a toilet on the bus. The driver's asking, do you want them to do a 10 minute stop at Abington Services over? No, I just dropped the phone. Roger, okay, I'll pass that on. If you want to maybe shout out to them when it's coming up, that if anybody needs a toilet, so you'll do a specific stop, but he's saying not really. Do you want a bottle of water? Oh, I've got one. Thanks. You've got one, okay. Do you want a bottle of water? Thank you. Thank you. Like some water? Just tell me to put the water where I don't want to put it. <laughs> or maybe he knows that there's no toilet. Fifty miles down the track, Network Rail's engineering teams are trying to fix the problem. With northbound trains still running during the day, they can only do the work at night. Obviously. Be easier, a lot easier if it was better weather conditions, but unfortunately, because we're in Scotland, we get this most of the time. All year round, no summer in Scotland. Up to the top bar again, Andy! A mile of overhead cables needs replacing in high speed winds. All these cantilevers have got to be replaced, new cantilevers. So it was just taking all the stuff off the old ones, put new insulators on, new tubes and then we'll put it up and tie it back ready for the wire. Damage, damage that rope up there, have you? Make sure that's no flopping about, David. You tuck it in some way. Oh! 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 Fucking hell! <laughs> this is one of the biggest we've had in oh, good seven or eight years. It's a big one. As it was their faulty cables that caused the delays, Network Rail is facing big fines. It's a lot of money. They're talking millions of pounds. All days. With the supports that hold the cables also damaged, it looks like it'll be several more days before the lines are back in full working order. At Edinburgh Waverley, services are running normally. We were supposed to be catching that and then changing at Newcastle for Sheffield, so where do I have to go? Can you tell me? 6 to 14 fitters. For the calm to continue, Ronnie and the team have to meet exacting deadlines. Could you come down to platform 2, uh, Coach Echo, with your plunger, please? Cheers. <laughs> the cleaning team have just 10 minutes to work through the train and replace the water before its onward journey. We have to go quick on the next one. I don't know if it's arrived yet. You can see already uh, people on the platform waiting for the train. Parisian Patrice Lechner joined the team 18 months ago. Hello, hello. How are you? You look fine like that. Hello. Bye. Oh, yes. Claire's end party. Wow. Very nice. Lovely blonde. Yon, yon. It seems to have fun already. <laughs> Good. They like to party, yes. That's the proof, huh? they drink a lot in UK. Huh? <laughs> First class needs, of course, a particular attention. Make sure the Union Jack is right. <laughs> I came to Edinburgh first to improve my English. So I started a job in the, in the Waverly station and uh, I met my wife at the station. My wife is working in the railway as well, and she's not working just right now because she's a she's a mom now. Here we go. Trapped in Scotland. <laughs> I have to say, when you take the French train, or the TGV is superb. Two and a half hours to cross all France. It's like going from Edinburgh to London in yeah, two hours and a bit. When it takes. 
four to five hours. It's a bit miserable, but whatever the weather is, we have to make sure things are clean. But it's good to go back sometimes to eat some cheese and wine. <laughs> there we go, this is our trophies. Just for one train. Did you find your ticket? Is it in one of the bins? You know where Coach Chef might be? It's hard to say. Yeah. Huh? I'd like to help you, but... It's not worth looking. Okay, thank you. Poor guy. No <laughs> chance. I didn't want to tell him. Alright, next one. This is terrible, huh? Uh, some people uh, got a strange approach to hygiene. I used to work for Audi in the motor trade, 60 hours a week, which is a lot. My priority uh, just now is uh, my family, and now I've got plenty of time for the kids. First time I took that job, and there was a manager who asked me, you sure you don't want to do a few days first, because it's quite degrading job. I was, what? Nothing is degrading, why not? I feel relaxed and, um, well, I enjoy that for the moment. Money is not everything. Excuse me. Go. Patrice earns just over nine pounds an hour for his shifts. You smell that, son? It's like gasoline. Smell like victory. <laughs> Every train is a victory, you know? Job done. <laughs> Scotland's East Coast Main Line connects Edinburgh with Aberdeen. I'm not with you. <laughs> Thank you. Its high speed trains start their journey in London and change drivers at Newcastle before heading north. So, this is where I come and sign on. Driver Trudy Tate arrives at midday to start her shift. Okay, so we used to have a train crew supervisor who would give you your work and tell you everything that was happening. And now, it's quite sad really. We're on our own. We sign on with the phone remotely. And then, these are anything extra that I've been given uh, paperwork-wise. This is my late notice case, so I've got to check here if anything new's happened. Naughty signals, naughty drivers. So much can go wrong if you're travelling on the train into work. It's a poor excuse when you say, I'm late for work because I use the train to come in. You, you know, think ahead a lot of the time of the things that could go wrong. I've got a lot of backup. You know, I've got, I've got a car, but I've got a motorbike if it doesn't start. And I've got lots of different ways I can come into work. And I sit off early, you know, just so I know I'm going to get here. There's a few times we've got here, like in the snow, two minutes before my train. And your heart's like this. Because it's only your fault, you know what I mean? Hi, Annie. Right, it's okay. This is my office. <laughs> yeah, it's filthy. <laughs> I think it's level round here. We don't get sick of it because it is so nice. So soon we're coming up to Morpeth, which is the scene of quite a few derailments. Um, so we have to go 50 round there. That's where the boss stands with a speed gun quite a lot. <laughs> Only because there's a good pub around the corner. <laughs> I like going fast, but I, you know, we, we really have to be sensible because if you speed on the railway, you're gonna, it's, it's going to be a disaster, isn't it? You know, you can't, you mustn't do it. One for the engines and two for you just, you know, you'll end up in a field and that's never good. There's a lot of forms to fill in when you come off the track. <laughs> East Coast has a fleet of 43 high-speed trains each one travelling up to a thousand miles a day. Some of the fleet are nearly 40 years old, and like all trains, keeping them going means regular maintenance. For that, they're sent to Craig and Tinney Depot near Edinburgh. They do everything here, from cleaning and refuelling to complete overhauls of the fleet. Fraser McBay is in charge of one of the maintenance teams here. This is Scott McKay, senior electrician, as you can see by the look of him. 
The bit older than everybody else in the shed. So Jason, our English ethnic friend, only Englishman in the sheds. It's the first time you ever see him doing anything. <laughs> Down! Some of these locos, they're between 30 and 40 years old. They have one of these on each side, one pushing, one pulling. Getting these up and down the country constantly, seven days a week. We've stood the test of time and we're just trying to keep them going that bit longer. I'm changing a fuel loading valve. If this valve fails, you have 5,000 litres of diesel pouring onto the track. Straight to you. Come here, son. Show your face. You got your light? Is your light on in there? Yeah, See him in there walking away. What's yeah. life like down under a train? It is a bit grotty in mine, in mine. Um, but you just have to get on with it, do as best you can. You've got oil, dirt, uh, dead animals, brake dust is the main thing as well, brake dust. All modern trains have tanks to hold toilet waste, but on these older models, the sewage is flushed straight out. Well, this is the, this is the waste pipe from the toilets. Obviously when the flush is coming out, it's hitting the track and it's gone everywhere. Toilet paper, human excrement, urine, it's just all stuck together. As you can see, human waste. If the train's going by 125 miles an hour or if you're standing outside, always face away from the running traffic because you, you don't want this on your face. Trust me. That's why you wear gloves. Craig and Tinney's latest recruit is 20-year-old apprentice, Tony. It's just a bit slow and open. I lost all my nails within a week of starting here, and I had lovely nails. I used to be able to paint them French manicure, don't know that, no, not anymore. I don't have any more. And I can't have nail polish on them because it chips. Is it just coming off of them two bolts, eh? Them two, pushing it to the airline. Three weeks after starting here, there was a big coolant leak, and I got blue coolant all over my hair and I was blonde at the time. As you can imagine I had green hair for about a week afterwards but it's all part of the job I guess. We have a couple of days off Christmas and Boxing Day. Well the trains do, we don't. We do our utmost to try and keep these things on the track and keep everybody, everything running and everybody happy. Mrs Jones and all the rest travelling on the trains. Sitting in the quiet coach or in the first class. Eating and drinking with your Wi Fi on. This is the real, real way. At Glasgow Central, Virgin passengers are enduring their third day of bus replacement services. The next replacement bus service is outside, it's waiting, it's not going to leave until it's full. Bad weather has hampered repairs to the damaged overhead cables on the West Coast main line. They've been warned because they've seen the news, it's been over the news and they'll have had travel updates on the internet as well that the line is down so they'll be expecting it out soon. There you go. They don't know exactly what time you're going to get into Carlisle at. So we get a refund of any sort? Certainly, if you, you know, there'll be a claims compensation form that you'll be able to fill out. We're getting there, we're getting there as always. <laughs> So far, the problems have led to 120 cancelled trains, and the knock-on effect has caused delays to services as far south as Bristol. Here's our baby. With preparation works complete, a specialist team and train have arrived to finally install the new overhead cables. One of only two such trains in the UK, it's had to travel up from the south of England. With the OCR team, uh, with rapid response, for all major incidents from uh, well, Glasgow to Houston, basically. We had the experts here. <laughs> Operated by a crew of 30 technicians, it can replace 1,500 metres of wire every four hours. We are going to replace the wire that carries the electric using the train. Get on, get it done, get home safe. Charge it. Me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know ourselves who's in charge. They put me with him because he's old. 
So I have to do all this, hey. and he just stands there. Hey. You can tell he's a bit senile. <laughs> no. There's no room for error when installing this heavy copper wire, which has to be hung at full tension. If that comes off, it can take your head off. Because it definitely kills you. Just gotta watch what you're doing, bye. Before I did this, I worked out pit for 20, 21 years. And I've been in this job now for about 12 years. No comparison to working down pit to this job. They were horrible down pit. Working in underpants in 110 degrees. After three nights working, 25,000 minutes of delay, and a cost of 800,000 pounds to network rail, the West Coast Main Line is back up and running. And Virgin services from Glasgow Central return to normal. Just go straight on. It's okay, just go on ahead through, you're fine. You don't need your ticket. I'll sleep well tonight. Although the Scottish Government provides £700 million in annual subsidies, the heavy cost of structural repairs and maintenance to the railways is ultimately passed on to passengers in higher ticket fares. Give my hand to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Just wanted to hold my hand. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, eh? Thank you. Monday afternoon at Edinburgh Waverley. If you try Coach G for golf, that's normally a bit quieter. Okay, right, no problem. Well, we went to Dundee and they actually we asked for the fries. At East Coast Trains customer reception, Pauline Lamont and her colleagues deal with passenger inquiries. In here you get all sorts. I mean, I think yesterday Gavin got somebody that was covered in blood, they'd fallen and the you know, dripping blood everywhere. And mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any kind of question you want to get asked? Um, down to where's the nearest sex shop? <laughs> What's the favourite restaurant? You know, they want to go for something to eat. And you're just meant to be telling train times and platforms. Yes, yes, yes. Bye. Bye. Sometimes people are just lonely and they just want somebody to chat to. You know, so they come in here an hour before the train is ready to go and then they sit and chat. My wife just left her bag on the 10.27 to Aberdeen. So you said it was on the overhead, sir? I believe it was on the overhead, yeah. Right, no problem. Hello there, Donna. I've got a gentleman that's just appeared in my office. His wife's left her Radley bag in Coach B for Bravo. Are you OK? Can you maybe help Gavin? While Pauline tracks down another lost bag, a colleague, Norrie McLeod, looks out for his more vulnerable passengers. We'll get you seated in first, then we'll get your luggage and everything else on. Lovely job. But it's not just the railways that keep Norrie busy. He's also a priest for the Celtic Church of Scotland. Charles Ardennes. Uh, a priest in the early 90s. I'll just put the ramp down. Two ticks. When I'm not working here on the weekend, I'll go and take a wedding or a, a, a funeral or something like that. What's this? People that meet me don't, well, if I don't say it to them, don't realise, because I can swear like the rest of them. <laughs> Welcome to Edinburgh! <laughs> hey! Please, 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 please. They're not going in this train, are they? They're probably coming off it. Oh. Because I've, I've had it with drunken men oh. on trains. I let it go the last time, but I won't let it go mm. this time. I'll take this up. Thank you. Very helpful. You've got it. That's brilliant. Right, bye. No. Right, the guard will be able to give it to you. Okay, okay. Right. No okay, okay. Thank you very That's much. Fine. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you very, very no much. No problems. Right. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. This is an education city here. I know, eh? Very, <laughs> very. You can learn all sorts. They get this marvellous. Marshall, we need Monday evening rush hour is just beginning. In East Coast's control room, they're keeping a close eye on events south of the border. We've got overhead line problems at Durham, which delayed services. We had a broken rail at Newark Northgate, which has delayed services by up to two and a half hours. So our rush hour is going to be affected. 
will be very, very busy. We can handle one thing that goes wrong. When two things go wrong, that's when we, uh, we get the, the pile of passengers. If you can step in a touch, please! You're on that train forever. Did you get the money back? Yes, that's right. Thank, Thank you. you. I only wanted for the aliens to come down and abduct us off that train. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have been complete. It will come up. We don't know before, unfortunately, but being late, it can go into any platform. You have two choices. You can either try and get on the five o'clock. We'll have to. We're meeting people. Right. Or the 5.30 as well. Just trying to explain to people what the problems are. And the next step is to try and get people on to the next available trains. If I'm shoved on to the five, I assume, with this one. That is, that is the next available, yeah. Okay, and this isn't valid anymore? Would I do to scramble for a first class seat? Your ticket's still valid, but your yeah. seat reservation isn't. So, yeah, you're correct in saying that you will need to try and find an unreserved seat. Guys, could you do me a favour and just wait on the platform for an extra few moments? Oh, just because nice. we get. Once we get it, most of this mess cleaned up, then we get back okay, on. No the decision to not put reservations on it is usually made by control in advance, um, just within regards to time constraints. You have to deal with the inevitable fact of you know you're sitting in my seat and and so on, which is which is which is interesting to a point because you know you never want to tell people it's you know you you don't have a seat anymore. It's never a nice thing to say. Quite frankly, I would hate to be the guard on a service like this because he's going to get it in the year. Hi right, guys, jump on. It's getting worse, it's getting worse. Our 433 service is running just under three hours late due to passengers taking a heart attack on the train. They were brought back to life three times um, and I've been reported they were taken off the train alive uh, and they're, in a, they're on the way to hospital at the moment. Because of, because of the delays we've also got a five o'clock train which we won't run today. Just get the elbows out. That'll sort them. Yeah. I was in the 1700 to Lincoln, which you've uh, cancelled. Can you give me uh, a revised time? I most certainly cancel. You okay there? Would you give me a seat on the next train to London? I can't reserve your seat, sir, no. It's too late to reserve your seat on the next one. No, no, wait a minute. I want a seat. I'm 86 years uh -huh. old. Yeah. I don't want to be standing to go to London. Yeah, what I'm saying to you is I can't reserve your seat. Whether you're 86 or... Why. He must have a, a no, we don't, we don't, because the reservations have closed now. The problem we do have, we've got all the passengers for the five o'clock train, most of them will be getting on at half past five, so we're going to have two loads trying to get on to the one train, it's already half full already. There you go. There's a lot of space in the other coach down that, we just walk through there, there's plenty of space. Must be this. As you see, there are no problems, only challenges. <laughs> Three hours away in Aberdeen, Eddie Barr's train is still on time. It's the first door there. One bike for Edinburgh. Bike gets his own ticket. No concessions. <laughs> He's been working as a train guard for over four years. And tonight, he's working the six o'clock back to Edinburgh. Thanks very much. Cheers now. Thanks, mate. Cheers. How are you guys? How are you all doing? Home time, home time. Oh, yeah, ah, good lads, yeah. <laughs> Tickets here, my friends. Tickets. 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 That's an airline ticket. Oh, Amsterdam. You just go back for Amsterdam. Look, <laughs> me. Hey, what's that? It's going to fucking Edinburgh or not? Yeah, it's going to Edinburgh, I think, yes. I'm going to fucking party in Edinburgh, okay? Uh -huh. I'm inviting you to come with me. No, oh, it's not fair. I appreciate the invite, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. Come with me. Okay, okay, okay. Take it easy. It's all good, it's all good, friend. Just come with me. We're going to get a new seat. Okay, right. Let me buy you a drink. No, listen, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Right, listen, there's no more drink for you. I want to get you back to your boat safely, okay? If you mind who you want to have a beer and no, no beers. You've had enough, my friend. 
not a choice. <laughs> We're keeping an eye on him. Jeff is a, a tall guy. He's kind of black jacket. You, you know, right. he's pretty drunk. He's tall and cracked. Tall, kind of thin, bigger than me, bald head, okay? Oh, nah, I don't drink from him. I'll, I'll probably be about Jeff anyway, okay? Enough, enough, right? Enough. What a drink? No, I don't want a drink. I'm pulling out control to ask the police to come at Dundee to have a word with him because I can't get any sense of him. Is that you, Steph? I've got a gentleman who is pretty intoxicated. Hello, gorgeous. So I would like to get the BTP at uh, Dundee Station because uh, I'm not too happy to go further than Dundee. Thank you very much. Bye. So all we need to do now is keep our fingers crossed that they come. <laughs> I knew it was all going too smoothly. <laughs> First class of the set, standard class right round the corner. At Edinburgh Waverley, it's four hours since train delays hit the evening rush hour, and the backlog of passengers has finally started to clear. I'm back on track as long as nothing else happens. Still got a few running, John. Hurry up in that door there. Doors are locked. We're trying to get them stopped running. It's been raining today. It's slippy here. If yeah. they go down, they can just roll. Forms to fill out. <laughs> Eddie Barr's train has arrived in Dundee, where the British Transport Police are due to deal with his drunken passenger. David, uh, we're just waiting for the police to come for you. <laughs> Erratic driving. Uh, no. no, we've got a, a very intoxicated passenger, unfortunately. Okay, okay. no Thanks, problem, Eddie. Eddie. Cheers. They're fighting over there. Sorry? They're fighting over there at the back. They're fighting? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It's a chip us over there already. I think they're fighting. <laughs> What's happening? There's a, guy, there's, a, there's a drunk guy. When you go away. He stopped me. Aye, aye, aye. So I tried, I tried to free him. He banged his head against the wall. He's off. Where did he go? He's away, he's off. So he's definitely off? He's definitely off. Yes. Are we okay to go? Thanks now. Thanks mate, cheers. Never a dull moment now. <laughs> cheers mate. <laughs> The state he's in, and obviously his description that's been given, I can't see him lasting long in Dundee without getting into more trouble. <laughs> I'm getting apprehended. Look at a good doing. One of those three are probably a combination of all of them. <laughs> On the West Highland Line, Ian McKinnon is out inspecting his 70 miles of track. There you are, there's a dead, well, what a dead stag. It's been eaten. It's been eaten a lot. It's been eaten by the crows. As well as keeping the line clear, Ian tightens any parts that have worked themselves loose. On busy modern railways, sections of track are welded together, but here, they're still joined by metal plates and bolts. The spanner's not big enough for it. It's just running all the time. It's a running bolt. What I do is I keep a note of, you know, what the bolts are bad. So these wooden keys that keep coming out. You've got to make sure that they do stay in place because it's a check rail for the train. And that's what uh, basically keeps the train on the track. Quite often you get six or seven out at a time. I'm going to tell you a story about this house here. It's a sad story. There was a, an old couple staying in that house. And uh, one day, the wee girl ran out the door and ran across and the train came around the car and killed her. That's about before I started in the rail, many, many years ago. Yeah, I actually know the lady, the lady's grandmother. That's been closed up for years. 
Nearly 300 people are killed on British railways every year. At Craig and Tinney Depot near Edinburgh, a high-speed train that's been involved in a fatality has been brought in to be fixed. As you can see, the damage that's happened is uh, quite extensive. This one is major. It was totally, totally destroyed the front end. Nothing could be really saved. To build this back up and machine the door out and getting things ready to try to put back into service, we're talking maybe a three or four day turnaround. All the time that they're off is money, uh, so we need them back in service ASAP. We've done a few, uh, but it's still not a nice thing. Uh, the first thing it normally hits you is you get a smell. Uh, it's, it's just not a nice thing. Just not nice at all. After every fatality, trains are thoroughly washed and disinfected. Found a human foot. <laughs> actually, it turned out to be a, a lady's foot. It was actually it was stuck in between the, the fuel pipe down here. And I found the bottom half of the jaw with the eye socket kind of thing. Horrible. Just bag it, tag it, and then send it away, and it goes to the lab or wherever. Not very nice, but it's part of my job. Not knowing who they are is obviously a lot easier. There's family out there that, you know, they've lost a loved one or whatever else. Eh? Most fatalities on the railways are suicides. Two and a half years ago, this woman decided to jump in front of me. I was doing 125. And by the time you've looked at it and focused on it, you've hit, you can't do a thing about it. I burst into tears before she even left the platform because I knew she wouldn't stop, I couldn't stop, I was going to have to witness it. And you keep looking because you think they'll move, they'll stop, they'll change their mind, but they're going to, you know, she was running too fast towards me to stop. So I thought, oh, no, I'm going to have to watch this. It was so surreal. I mean, I thought I was watching it on telly. I couldn't believe my eyes. And the next minute, of course, although you're in shock, all your emergency training's got to kick in. You've got to do the right thing, stop the track, let everybody know, make sure you secure the train, stop the train properly, everything. What a bizarre day that was. Thankfully, I did all the things I had to do and then had a meltdown later. <laughs> you can't feel guilty about it. And you knew that when you took the job on. And I'm, I'm quite relieved that it happened later on in my career. It wasn't, didn't happen quite early on because it was absolutely horrendous and very traumatic for everybody concerned. They're just not, they're not in, are they? They're not thinking at all. But it definitely changed me, definitely. Scotland's landscape has made it an ideal destination for passengers who want to experience train travel from a bygone era. Every year, private charter trains are squeezed onto the network around regular passenger services. Tonight, the restored Orient Express Northern Bell, run by a private company, is making one of its luxury round trips from Edinburgh Waverley. Do you know your seat numbers? 119 passengers have paid £250 each for the experience aboard this 1930s train. The main course we've got chestnut stuffed yerry fowl breast wrapped in pancetta with uh, red cabbage fondue. Three chicken, one veg, one bass, one normal. 
get used to everything because if I cook at home I lean against I lean against the side and I sway while I cook. It's just something that you do. This is a beetroot cured salmon gravel axe. During the four hour round trip, 34 crew serve up a kilogram of caviar and 150 bottles of champagne. If you wait about three seconds though, one, two, three, check again. Back to your garden where uh, 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 Jack's lives. Thanks very much, ladies. Enjoy your dinner tonight. Thank you very much. This is better than a five star restaurant. We're hoping there's a snowfall and we're staying on for a few hours. The later, the better. <laughs> It's a rare passenger that wishes they were delayed. Oh, oh. Mind your step. Thank you. Thank you now. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks now. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. 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 Every night, Scotland's track teams are out working on some part of the network on a rolling programme of repairs to track and infrastructure. It's costly, but necessary just to keep the lines up and running. Tonight, Edinburgh's Haymarket tunnels have been closed so they can replace the worn out rail on this busy commuter route to Glasgow. This is one of the most important lines. This, uh, this is for the trains going right through to, to Glasgow and that. And the arms up here is a lot of money for delays in here. You know what I mean? The team has just six hours to lay 300 feet of track that's been eroded by damp in these Victorian tunnels. The quake. The network rail team have to complete this job before the first train runs through at 9am. A small army of contractors has also been drafted in to meet that deadline. From the minute you get to the depot to the minute you go home to your farm works, go, go, go. Watch it, that's the railway for you. Any job in the tunnel basically is a nightmare. It's not the cleanest environment you won't be working in. A wee bit uh, muck, <laughs> as in uh, <laughs> human waste, I'd, I'd say. That's what it is, human dirt is on the track there, you know. You don't know what you're touching. <laughs> workers have been booked until seven, but with 15 tons of rail to replace, it may not be enough time. I think there'll be a bit of breakdown in communications, and as you can see the job's uh, not complete yet. Obviously we need all hands on deck to get this job finished. It's just before the contractors are due to finish, but it's clear to team leader John Morgan his bosses need to agree to keep them on longer. Right, I don't think they've all stayed on, like, we need all hands on deck here, like, this is going to be better. It'll be a bit hectic now. Keeping them on will be costly, so while John waits for a decision, the team cracks on with the work. Finally, John's bosses agree to keep the contractors on for an extra hour and a half. That's just got the rest of the guys to half past eight, so we're all here today. So hopefully it goes a wee bit smoother now. With the new rail section secured in place, the last part of the job is to weld them together. At a temperature of 3,000 degrees Celsius. When it's near water, it, it can't be put out. It sets water and fire. I've not had an accident, 
Touch here with the stays that way. <laughs> after this I'll be home, get the, the head down for a while and then for the football this afternoon and then back out night shift Monday night. That's me, rest up for Monday. <laughs> Fresh air. Please to get the fresh air. Fresh air. Glad that's over. By 9am, Edinburgh's Haymarket tunnels are back open for business. Ready for another day on the Scottish Railways. You have to have a reservation for the bicycle. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, no, it's free, but you have to go to the ticket office for it. Quite enjoy this. Uh, love it. Love it. Bolt missing there, so. I've got to take note of that. I never spoke English till I was about 12 years of age. I was brought up, the school we were at, where I was brought, but it's all Gaelic. Shachu, yop, ha, it's a railway. Don't know what the Gaelic is for railway. <laughs> What's that mean? It means it's a good job, the railway. Uh, do you know the Hashin Gultavi and the Malag? What time are we going to be in Malag? Kaval and Dren, Viliana Machadish. Where's the train? Is it late again? Ah, just knock. Ah, Jama. Up the right. Oh. Gug Fayo Kalakalaha left. See, I just knock. What does that mean? It's just a beautiful place and it's nice to walk. 